Your attention, please. And now, on with the show. Live from Paradise Studios in New York, Strong Island Television presents Unger the Radar, starring Randy Unger. Brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Tonight, Randy will be interviewing two-time Emmy Award winning attorney, YouTuber, Eddie Herman. Randy will also be reviewing the new films, Miss Virginia and El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, with special guest critics, Chris Clemente and Nick Commando. And now, here's your host, Randy Unger. Hey guys, I'm Randy Younger, and welcome to Unger the Radar, a very special edition. Actually, every edition is special. Uh, right next to me, I've got fellow critic, Mr. Nick Commando. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see me, too. Yeah, first time in a new in a new set, right? I know. I'm uh, not wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us. Um, <laughs> and right now, I've got, uh, through Skype, we've got, uh, we've got a two-time Emmy award-winning attorney slash YouTuber, Eddie Herman. Eddie, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time today. Not a problem. Happy to be here. Yeah. So um, I believe some of your videos uh, have, have gone viral. I know you're, you're like a YouTube star now. Um, tell everybody, how did, how did you make the transition from uh, attorney to YouTuber? Well, you know, what happened was my law firm, uh, Brown and Crouppen, um, we're pretty big out in the Midwest, even though I'm from New York. We've always done a lot of television advertising, and it works really well, and we've grown a pretty good business. But it occurred to us that people under the age of 40 just aren't watching television anymore. Right. And we thought, well, how is this whole next generation and the one after that? How are they ever going to know about our firm and know our name and, and kind of get an idea of what we're like? And so the idea was is we really need to get digital. We need to be hitting people on Facebook. We need to be hitting people on YouTube. But you can't just hit those people with a lawyer commercial. I mean, let's be honest, nobody really even enjoys watching a lawyer commercial on regular TV. But on regular TV, they don't have that much of a choice unless they want to change channel. But in the digital universe, if people don't want to watch something, they can turn it off, skip it, scroll past it, you know, and, and, and that's it. So we had to develop content that we thought would be entertaining. And in the process of doing that, I developed, you know, my show, uh, which is called Ed Versus, for those who are not familiar with it. Um, and we also have a second show called Three Lawyers Eating Sandwiches that <laughs> I've also had a lot of fun doing. But anyway, that's how it came to be. Okay. Um, what do you hope audiences uh, take away from these videos? Well, I, you know, obviously I want people to be entertained. Uh, but what I really want people to do is I want people to feel like, like, they're a little bit closer to me and to our firm. You know, I want people to say, you know, this is a regular guy. He's funny. He thinks about the kind of stuff that, you know, I kind of my angle on adverse is, is I try to articulate things that people have thought about, but have never really taken the time to voice to each other so that we all think we're having this, our own experience. And then you say it out loud and other people are like, oh my God, I didn't realize other people thought like that too. So when I've done episodes like Ed versus Airplanes, which is uh, one of the ones that uh, that I got the Emmy for, um, you know, that had a lot to do with sort of the shared experience of all these little things that happen on an airplane that, you know, you didn't realize everybody was thinking about. Like I spend a lot of time talking about the whole beverage process and, and how scary it is when I have to pass that very full beverage over my lap to the person next to me and how I, I, I worry that it's going to spill on me because I may not have packed another pair of pants for the trip. You know, <laughs> yeah. little things like that okay. and or Ed versus Elevators, which was just out a couple of um, a few weeks ago, did really well. It got over a million and a half views hmm. and it was filled with comments of people saying, you know what, I thought I was the only person that ever thought about that stuff on an elevator, but now I know I'm not alone. So there's just a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. and I want people to feel like this guy's smart, he's funny. If I needed a lawyer, I would want to call this guy. That's the idea. <laughs> I'm curious, uh, what type of law are you, are you, do you practice? 
we practice uh, it's it's all personal injury okay and pharmaceutical but we only we only represent individuals and we only represent individuals who have been injured um, generally when they're injured it's not their fault it's you know somebody else's act of negligence or a lot of times it's the act of, you know corporate negligence you know a pharmaceutical company that's put out a, a dangerous drug or a dangerous medical device and then our our clients are all honestly innocent victims of that mm. but they don't know what to do who to turn to and so they come to us and and we go through the motions of getting them uh, you know getting them a recovery it's a very uh, serious territory you're you're in um, what is it like bouncing between that world and the comedy world you know it's uh, lawyers in general especially in the world of injury there's a lot of humor that goes into it. You kind of have, you need that on a day-to-day -day basis because a lot of the cases you're working on can be a little bit depressing. I mean, you see people who have been horribly injured or they've had loved ones that have been injured or worse. And if, if you don't balance that through the day with a certain amount of, of humor, it becomes very difficult to be able to do a good job that way. So for me, uh, it's, it's really not much of bouncing back and forth. Um, it just, you know, I just am who I am on a daily basis. If I'm putting a video together, uh, I slip into that mode very easily, and I put everything I have into every aspect. Mm -hmm. I guess that's probably the one common characteristic, whether it's my normal job or the fun I've been having doing the videos, is um, I just approach things the right way. I put everything I have into it, and I hope to get a good result, either one, whether it's on a case or on a video. Right. And I'm curious, um, are there any comedic influences or how, how did you develop your own comedic voice well you know i grew up you know i had this thing and the, for my mom really from a very young age introduced me to a lot of comedy mm -hmm. she had me watching all the old comedy movies from her time and we had a lot of comedy albums in my household growing up so i mean even as a little kid i'd be listening to you know robert klein and and jackie mason and all sorts of albums we had mm -hmm. and then i got into this habit around high school where every night when I'd go to sleep, I, I would get trapped in my own thoughts. I couldn't shut my brain off. I know a lot of other people have that problem. Mm -hmm. And so I developed this trick where I would put a comedy album on and I would focus on it and just listen to it. And and uh, this way I would fall asleep and maybe get a couple of chuckles in before I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'd listen to Bob Newhart, I'd listen to Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner doing the 2000 year old man. And then uh, I would say for me personally, when I make my videos and I look back on them to try to figure out which comedic voices am I ripping off, uh, <laughs> I, and I, I, for me it's a combination of like Larry David and Jim Gaffigan. It has sort of a sweet, a sweet innocence of Jim Gaffigan where nothing's really controversial and it's a lot of it is about food and it's, it's, it's very uh, family friendly. But then there's that Larry David edge where I'm always trying to fix the world that we live in and I, I always looking at little things saying if everybody would just have a little bit more courtesy with this or with that or follow the set of rules that I've set up you know we all just have a better existence so there's definitely both of those kind of combined so you would say uh, observational comedy is your forte yeah observational comedy and then also my foolish belief and arrogance I guess that I somehow figure things out a little bit more like this Thursday my new video comes out it's Ed versus concerts. I've, I've been to over 100 concerts in my life. So the whole video is, is sort of about if performers would just follow these basic rules and if fans would just follow these basic rules, <laughs> yeah. we could all have such a better time at all of these concerts. <laughs> right. And then I make a few observations about the difference between taking my daughter to a young person concert like a Taylor Swift or a Ariana Grande compared to taking my mother to an old people concert <laughs> like like Frankie Valli. And you could tell in the video, I've definitely crossed over to old people territory because I, I have way more in common, I think, with them <laughs> than I do these people at these other concerts. That's awesome. Now, Eddie, you, you obviously have a very strong presence. You're very likable from what I see. Um, oh, thank you. Have you dabbled in TV or film at all? or? You know, well, I do, I do, I haven't done any film. I would, you know, I'd love to, but I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know if anyone's calling or you know, knocking <laughs> on the door. Um, but Never on know. television, <laughs> I, I do a weekly segment. Uh, we do three different shows in the Midwest. 
they're all morning shows, and a lot of them I do are just sort of legal segments. But like in Kansas City, which is where I am now, I do a segment called Taste and See Kansas City. Right. I do it on the morning program with one of the co-hosts. And really that, we just go to a lot of different restaurants and different attractions in town. And I get to eat a lot, which I'm very good at. <laughs> and, and then I, I just talk about the food. And you know I, everything I do, I, I have a certain amount of enthusiasm for. So I think it, I, I think it always con- kind of comes off really well. Uh, for the viewer, because it, it is sincere. I don't just go on there and act phony. It's just, right. you know, I get very excited about just doing stuff. So I do that, but you haven't seen me yet okay. on like any of your, you know, big TV shows or certainly not movies. But if anybody's watching that wants to put me in something, yes, I'm basically a media whore and I'll do anything. I can see a buddy comedy between you and Paul Giamatti. <laughs> I think there you be, go. Like I'm, awesome. I'm like his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, and I'm like Paul. What are you doing? Come on. <laughs> Come on. So you eat a lot, you, you go out, and basically you're, you're, I guess it's safe to say you're sort of a food critic. Um, yeah, except I don't criticize. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know what, I, I, I'm not a big believer in <laughs> criticizing other people's hard work. Right. Because I like to believe that, that they care very much about what they do. Mm. And if they're happy with the product that they made, mm. I think that really is, is the test. I know for like for me and my videos, my barometer for whether or not the video is a success is when I watch it back. If it came out the way that I intended it to come out, mm-hmm. I consider it a success regardless of what people ultimately mm-hmm. think about it. And I feel like that's probably true of of anybody who does anything. I mean, so I don't like to criticize mm-hmm. uh, somebody else's hard work. I will praise it. I will always look for the positive. Um, and if there's something that, that, you know, I'm not a big fan of, you know, who am I to have an opinion that, cut somebody else down. So I, I tend to just keep that to myself. That's good. Uh, do you do all your editing yourself? Uh, I do. I always have like an actual editor in the room with me who knows technically what they're doing. And mm-hmm. and uh, I, I'll sit there with them and we collaborate. Um, and uh, we really, tra- it's, it's a process, but I've never had any of my videos go out without me sitting right there, <laughs> picking all the shots and you know, working with them to well, on graphics and yeah. just figuring out. I mean, that's the thing is we shoot so much footage and, you know, you can't fall in love with yourself. You have to make all those cuts and really just try to keep the stuff that works the best, because that's the other thing on a digital platform. You know, I can keep people's attention for a while, but life goes on and people don't always have time to watch me mixing bowls of cereal, right. uh, which is another <laughs> set of videos I've done and, and people love them. But right. You know, they're not going to watch it for an hour. That, so I have to really cut these videos down. Mm-hmm. I think the longest one we put out is maybe eight minutes. And the shortest one was Ed versus Naps, uh, <laughs> where I teach people how to take a really good nap, three different kinds of naps. And I give them, you know, I, I think I'm an expert nap taker. So, I mean, if I have something to offer, I, I offer it. That video, I think, was only five and a half minutes huh. and wound up getting about 2.2 million views. Wow. So uh, yeah. apparently a lot of people like to nap. Who knew? Life skills for everybody, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so t- we have about a minute or so left. Uh, okay. You've won two en- two Emmys. What is the process? What is the experience like of winning an Emmy? Well, you know, I mean, it was a pretty amazing thing. I, we were shocked when we got not. We actually had four nominations, mm-hmm. and uh, so I got the experience. Both experiences, I got the experience of hearing our name called. Two times as winners, nice. and the experience of having two other categories where we didn't win. Uh, all I can say is that the ones where you win are a lot better. <laughs> that, was, that feels good. Uh, thankfully, the first one that we were up for was for Ed versus Airplanes, and we won that one. So once that happened, I calmed down. I didn't really worry too much about the rest of the evening. I just sort of relaxed. Mm-hmm. I also found out that I, I still look pretty good in a tuxedo. I don't think I had worn one in 20 years, and uh, there is something about a tux. It'll take even an average-looking guy and make him look like red carpet ready. That is awesome. Well, Eddie, I want to thank you so much for your time today. This, this was so good. Well, <laughs> let me tell people where to find my Oh, videos. yeah, plug away. If you, yo, yeah, if you go to www.getbctv.com, and that will take you, and you could look at all the playlists for Adverses and also for Three Lawyers Eating Sandwiches <laughs> and for Terry's Safety Squad, which is an animated cartoon <laughs> where I do the voice of the bad guy in that. So if you become obsessed with me and you want to see everything I've done, that's the place to do it. Sweet. Cool. And Eddie, if you're ever in Massapequa, we'd love for you to stop by the studio. 
I absolutely will. I, I get I get back to New York a couple times a year. Great, great. We'll be in touch. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Take so care. Much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Hey, Nick. <laughs> hey, Randy. So, <laughs> this is um. Well, this is going to be our film review segment. We oh, have we have uh, Chris Clemente joining us through Skype. Hopefully, he'll be calling in in about a few a few seconds. Um, the new set, first impression. What do you think? We're at a table. We are at a table. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like a sports desk. It is. And it I'm is. Not a sports I feel guy. like I feel like I should be giving the weather forecast. Yeah. Well, that'll come at the end. We'll we'll save some time for the. The weather right, Good, I'll check my phone. <laughs> good, I'll check the laptop. All right, good. <laughs> good, all right, we got that covered. And I oh, Mr. Clemente. Oh Phone's ringing. <laughs> so we got to answer the phone. This is great. Chris? Chris, hello. You there? Chris, hello? Hello. Hey, guys, do you hear me? Yeah, how's it going? Good, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, sorry you're not here in person. So good. How's everything going over there? Good, good. Okay. Uh, been a busy day. Yeah. A lot of running around, yeah. I hear you. Well, we still have a good amount of time. We just spoke with, uh, oh, there he is, uh, Eddie Herman. He was quite a gentleman, I must say. He was a nice guy. Yes, he was. Yeah, I, caught, uh, I caught the tail end. It was, it was really cool. It seemed like you guys clicked very well. Yeah. I hope to see him here in person as well some point so yeah yeah i would say you know just uh keep in touch and when he's down in new york he uh i think he would be more than willing to oblige yeah yeah, yeah. seems very cool very down to earth uh new yorker so that's a good thing yeah mm. all righty so it looks like i'm the only one who saw this movie the first of the two okay um it you guys didn't miss a whole lot i mean it, it is a, a decent movie it's uh it's called miss virginia and it is a drama starring uh Uzo Aduba from uh, Orange is the New Black. Yeah. Orange is the New Black. Great show. And uh, there's a still from the, the movie. And basically she plays a, uh, a hardworking mom whose 15-year-old son, he's, uh, he's kind of troubled. He's running the wrong crowd. She wants to put him in a private school, but it's too expensive. So she has to go to uh, local politicians to have legislation passed to for um, children in in poor circumstances to go to school and not be uh, affected by gang violence and bullying and um, mm -hmm. I think it was a pretty decent movie it was, um, very well acted by Uzo Aduba that name is uh, can't get over that name <laughs> the but tongue twister it is it is but but she's a terrific actress she's a uh, she was crazy eyes in orange and new black yeah she was um, she was and I think this is one of her first starring roles since the show and um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you guys get a chance, I highly recommend it. Um, it's also got Nat, uh, Matthew and Modine, so some star power there. Uh, all righty, we can just move right along. Yeah, moving on to the movie that everyone wants to talk yes, about. Yes, I know, I know. You know I like to have two movies in a show, but... Oh, no, no, I'm not criticizing the first movie. I'm well, just saying wait, everyone going, wants to talk about it. I know. Going back, Randy, would you, uh, would you recommend... Your movie that you saw? Yeah, I mean, is it on your Nick radar? I, it, no, it, it's definitely on the radar. I wouldn't go out, yeah. you know, go so far to go see it, like go out of my way to go see it. But um, yeah. it's decent. Uh, the performances are good. It, and it's actually based on a true story. Uh, this woman who tried to get this legislation passed. And no spoilers. But um, yeah. Did it get passed? Yeah, it did. All right. <laughs> Hooray, government. Yes. Oh, it, man. It, like, you wanted it not to. Oh, the history. <laughs> now I'm not going to go and do the research. <laughs> shucks. Darn. Oh, well. Oh, shucks. Oh, man. So do you, uh, do you, Randy, do you think that it's just um, on the nose with movements and causes going on today with bullying and, and all that? Oh, yeah. This has a very, very strong uh, anti-bullying message, anti-gangs and basically mm -hmm. just trying to make schools you know, better environments for uh, for kids. So yeah. it, it, it's very, I guess it's timely. And um, I mean, you know, what, what parent wouldn't want that for their kid, you know? So yeah. I recommend it. Cool. <laughs> Bad parent. Cool. I'll, I'll definitely <laughs> check it out. Very inspirational. And it's out in theaters uh, now, also on digital and on demand. So I thought I'd just uh, throw that out there as well. 
But like Nick said, the movie that is on everybody's minds that we're, we want to talk about, uh, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. And yes. basically, uh, this continues the adventures, I guess you'd say, of Jesse Pinkman. I guess we could say... Well, it's a, it's a good bot. It's a it's a it's a farewell letter to Jesse Pinkman. That's what it is. Yeah, you know, it's it's yeah. There he is, Aaron Paul as Jesse Pinkman, the uh, meth head turned meth dealer, and now he's a vigilante, straight and narrow turned prisoner. Yeah, his parents. I, I really feel for them. That's really they're going through a lot. <laughs> yes, they are. But um. They are. Guys, watching at home, if you haven't seen uh, Breaking Bad, the show. What are you doing? It's on Netflix, all five seasons. What have you been doing? How have you not seen this show yet? <laughs> Watch it from season one all the way to this movie. It's it's really epic. It's it's yep. just a beautiful I, story. I want you to write letters to Unger the Radar <laughs> explaining what you've been doing <laughs> that have inhibited you from watching Breaking Bad. You can put them to the attention of, of Nick Commando. Well, I'll tell you, I was a little late to the party. I think I started watching it. Um, up until I think I, I caught it towards the last season, the last two seasons. I watched it. I started watching it and caught up right as the second half of the final season came out on TV, mm -hmm. and that was one of the worst decisions I've ever <laughs> made because then I had to wait a week for the sh I had to wait for the show to finish. Yeah. Every week. Oh god. And it was terrible. Yeah, I I originally watched it when it was completed, uh, all the way through. Nice. But for the for this film, I spent the last two months revisiting the series, so I saw it <laughs> in its entirety again, which was uh, which was a great idea because yeah. <laughs> uh, it really filled in some of the gaps uh, that I would have not uh, remembered if I didn't have done that. Yeah. Did, so this was your second viewing of the whole series? The whole series, yeah. Wow. I've it's, only seen it once all the way through. I definitely need to give it another you know, shot. It's... I... It is, <laughs> bar none, not only, I think, the best, if not one of the best uh, television shows out there, but I think yep. cinematically, uh, I think it's just one of the best pieces of, of film media out there. I mean, it is just exquisitely written. It's it's has a little bit of everything. Yeah. From even, even there is a ton. I, I forgot how many comedic sincere funny moments there are uh yeah not only in dramatic and it's 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 a uh, you know it's just it, it says wonders about the writing staff that went on here because they took their time to make sure that each character had a uh, a character arc or at least close to almost every character having a character arc it's 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 awesome yeah. Now, was I, it, now with that said, I haven't I haven't really spent time at all with uh, Better Call Saul, or Saul rather, and uh, yeah. I can't wait I can't wait for that to finish because I'm going to be doing the same thing. <laughs> now, is that a prequel series? Or yes, it that, is. That's it tells the story of before of Good, Saul Goodman's evolution into Saul Goodman. Right. So watch yeah. that, then Breaking Bad, then El Camino. No, and, no, you watch you watch Breaking Bad first because oh, that's the yeah. first one. It establishes who Saul is during that time frame in the Breaking Bad universe. Okay. You watch El Camino. I mean, the other two you watch in literally any order you want. Huh. You either watch yeah. El Camino, you say goodbye to Jesse, you sob uncontrollably into your pillow. <laughs> and then you go on Netflix and you start watching Better Call Saul. Okay. Which is a bit of a slow burn. Mm. A slow burner. Yeah, um, not in the hard. fact that it starts off slow and gets really good. They're taking their they they take their time with his story, You're right? Yeah. And that's that's what makes it really really good to yeah. me. Mm. Because just based off of advertisement alone, I know I, they're getting more into um, Gustavo's character a little bit now. Well, there, there's there's cracks in Saul Goodman, or in his real name is Jimmy McGill. There's there's yeah. cracks in Jimmy from the start. Hmm. He yeah. doesn't go full Saul right away, but he gets there very slowly. And if you watch yeah. what goes on in the show, it's just... It's not as delicious as Walt into Heisenberg, right? but it's, it's right. a tier or two below that. Okay. Walt into Heisenberg, to me, is the single greatest character evolution <laughs> that yeah. I've ever seen on a screen. Walt into yes. Heisenberg? Yeah, because yeah, he I... just... 
is it, he evolves or devolves he into hates a criminal his, mastermind. It's yeah. You don't realize how <laughs> much he hates his life until you watch him evolve over the show. Right. Yeah. He he genuinely and I was talking to somebody about this and I, I can't remember who it was now, but he really feels as though and he talks about it in like one of the first episodes of the second season, I think, when he finally tells Skylar he has cancer. He just he doesn't feel that anything in his life has gone the way he's wanted it to. Right. And he feels that he never had control over anything. And then he finds this one thing that he's really good at. Yeah. And he just doesn't want to let go of it, no matter how screwed up it is. Right. No, yeah. the, 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 there and are then, shades of gray here that, that are that like, it kind of yeah. unravels around his finger to the point where like Skylar knows and all these other people know. And he's at the brink now where he could lose control of that, but he has to kind of get even more evil and get more tough in order yeah. to kind of still control it. And, well, it's, um, it's a crazy it, it's ethical also dilemma. Too, it's also, too, that he has he has no clue what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At yeah. any point at any point in this in this series, he is such a blind squirrel running around yeah. in the same tree. And the only thing he, walls. No, the only thing he knows how to do is make the meth. That exactly. That's the exactly. Only, everything dealing else, with the criminal just, underworld is anything not else, his right. He's just right. running right. around right. with a machete and just waving it around <laughs> and people right. getting hit and he's like, "I can't believe I chopped his head off." Right. And it's like, right. "You're waving a machete. What what did you expect was going to happen?" Oh, yeah. That's oh, why yeah. Jesse Pinkman is his the perfect oh. yin to his yang. Je Jesse is like the ultimate tragic <laughs> hero. Mm because you feel so bad for him over time because he at the beginning of the show he was just a burnout screw up and right. by the end of the show he was just this completely reluctant party that just couldn't escape the tentacles of heisenberg yeah and right. you know the beautiful thing about the ending of the show is nobody knew what happened to him hmm. And everybody had all these interpretations, and that's where we go with El Camino. Yeah. Is they talk about, you know, it tells the story of what happens after the finale, right. after Felina, and what happens in in that time frame of, like, I think I think Vince Gilligan said it was like five or six day period or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you think that this movie complements the show? You, do you... I mean, oh. some people think that this movie is a little unnecessary. The, the people that, that think this movie is unnecessary are idiots. <laughs> and they, they romantic. The thing that people do is they romanticize the concept of a show. Mm -hmm. and, and I think what's happened is you've had six years yeah. to marinate in Breaking Bad to romanticize what the show is and romanticize what it was in the story that it told. Yeah. And... I don't know what they expected was going to happen in this in this movie that to me didn't happen. Yeah. You know, everything to me felt like it made sense. Everything to me felt like it had a place. You got the cameos you wanted. You got a phenomenal scene with a specific person that I think we all wanted to happen and didn't see coming and then it happened and we were like, oh! Um... <laughs> But it was to me, it was just a beautiful love farewell letter to Jesse Pinkman and kind of to the universe almost. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to have, you know, the way Better Call Saul is going to end, in my opinion, with Walter White walking into his office for the first time. Mm. And that to mm -hmm. me is how you end that show. That's great. That's great. And it's not, thank you, I'm going to write a letter to Vince, I'm gonna write a letter to Vince, <laughs> Vince Gilligan and tell him that that's how it needs to end. Um, but that's, that's how that show ends. So. That goes right into the Breaking Bad universe. Right. This is the end of it to me. Okay. I, I don't I, see how I, they revisit I it. That, I think yeah. for an ending, it was perfect. You tied everything up with Jesse that I think needed to be tied up. You told the story of like what exactly happened to him in captivity. Yeah. And you answered the question of where did he go? What more did you want? <laughs> that's that's what I want to know from we these people. We just want more Vince Gilligan. We really do. Like, he can do no wrong. Oh, as long as he's writing Breaking Bad related stuff, yeah. I mean, he's done some other I stuff that he, hasn't really been all that I, great. I, really, but. I think he's reached a point now where I'm curious as to what else he can conjure up in that head of his. Right. You know, um, you know, don't forget, he uh, he was on X-Files, and he was a writer on X-Files, and 
that's how he started with Brian Cranston, just through one episode that they knew that they wanted to work together again. Oh, um, it'll be interesting to see what other Breaking Bad uh, material he can come up with. I think he's reached this point now where it's almost like this movie had to happen to be that complete farewell so that he could move on to another project, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I totally agree with, with what Nick's saying. Um, it is the farewell that I don't think we knew that we wanted, but we got. And <laughs> shucks, I am so happy for it because having watched the series again, um, some things went through my mind. So A, I second time around, I really disliked Walt's character even more. It came to a point where I was ready for him to, to end his character. You know, like I was like ready to just wrap up the series because I'm like, all right, he's a one trick pony kind of with uh, just doing the math, like you guys were saying. And, you know, he's pretty set in his ways and, you know, let's, let's wrap up the show. Now I kind of felt that this, this time, uh, this time around, not to say that I would watch it again and again and again, but two other things happened too. And, uh, a Skylar seemed less as a bitch. Uh, she seemed <laughs> more of a victim, um, uh, coming back in, into this hindsight. Uh, she, she was right in a lot of ways. And, and despite Walt not really having control over even, even a, a drug dealer life, um, <laughs> You know, he was really, he was really separating his family, and uh, which was the intent of him doing this was for his family. And Skyler was the one that kind of, you know, had to call that out, and and she had to do that through this, you know, almost like crime boss's wife way, where she had to just separate himself herself from him. Yeah. And I was totally on board with that a second time around. Um, and then the third uh, was with Jesse. Um, his his character arc is one of the best, um, and it's hard to believe uh, that his character was going to be uh, killed off on the first uh, season after the first season. Huh. To think there would have been a series that 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 had uh, the morale and the heart that came out of of Jesse Pinkman's character. Uh, I, I can't imagine it being half as good. You know, yeah. I think Jesse's character and Paul's character is really the glue um, of the whole series. It's it's what allows us to realize that someone can grow um, in a world of, of meth and violence, and and it was really the true counterpart to uh, to Walt's character. Um, yeah. So this movie, like this movie, was just a blessing in disguise. It was. I what I particularly loved um is this whole concept of the universe uh, the universe kind of uh making its way to to better his life and um i love that little flashback um with jane um in there uh, it's a good little nugget for for the audience to see and um it, it really shows that through all this shit that he went through through you know him being uh, just a meth head, a druggie, to you know a drug from a drug dealer to a drug maker to a hustler to someone who is now uh, a hitman uh, to someone who's really just forced like a dog to to create meth until the very end. Hmm. It's great that he got his due justice, and it's phenomenal how he became uh, what he made himself out of towards the very end of El Camino and. Yeah. You know, it, it makes you think that, hey, like, maybe throughout all this this shit that went on in his life, you know, maybe it was for a reason. And maybe that reason was to get him at, you know, the place that we see him towards the end of the movie. And yeah. I think uh, I think it, it, it just – it provides that, that little check mark, uh, that little silver lining that, you know, we didn't really get or at least there was a lot of speculation – as to whether or not, you know, there was a true ending to, to Breaking Bad. This was, I think, just that that little, um, you know, ride off onto the sunset that we, that you know, a lot of fans just wanted for Walt uh, at the end of the series. So yeah, this, was a, this was a great little, little nod to that. It definitely capped things off nicely, and I, I yeah. really like what they did with it. I was thrilled. Like, six years after the series finale... Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so that was six years of Vince just like fine tuning that script, getting every all those pieces in place. A whole staff of writers. You know, yeah. It's not, it's not just one person. You know, hmm. it's it's a lot of people, and you could tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about Breaking Bad too that I that I love about it, it's kind of a show of opposites. Because yeah. I think if you really think about it, and I went back and rewatched some of Breaking Bad, and you know, events in my yeah. life unfortunately inhibited me from finishing the whole series before El Camino came out. But Skyla was on Walt from the jump. I never yeah. liked from her. the first episode. She's always been. He comes a home. He comes home <laughs> on their first cook, and she's like, "You have to talk to me." And it's like, yeah. how long has it been? He's been out for all of like forty minutes. Like, how did? How is she already suspecting him of something? They made her. She was on him from the jump, and like, yeah. you're supposed to. To me, Skyler's supposed to be one of the people that you root for in the show, and I and I am con I convinced never, never. that it was the complete opposite reaction from fans because almost everybody I've spoken to <laughs> hates Skyler's <laughs> guts. Yes. And her sister, yes. and her. Well, yes. Marie is Marie's supposed to be terrible. They're I mean, both awful you people. watch Marie on that show, and you're like, that woman has problems. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, she, everything sad. is about her. The world revolves around her, yeah. and for some reason, she has issues with with shoplifting and, and, and stuff <laughs> like that. And like, what is wrong with you? Your husband a DEA agent. He's making money hand over fist. You're a radiologist or whatever. You're probably making pretty damn good salary. I don't think New Mexico is all that expensive of a place to live. <laughs> no. All right, and their house looks real nice. <laughs> yeah. So what is what is your problem? Why anyway, the bug up the ass? Exactly. So like, <laughs> Skylar is supposed to be likable, in my opinion. She's supposed to be kind of one of the heroes of the show, and I think everybody just hates her heroes because oh. she was on. Yeah. Well, really, she was think about to be... it. Think about okay. it. She's she's not she's not willing to be party to anything Walt right. does Voice until, of reason. until yeah. she realizes that they're waist deep in it and yeah. she's going to be just as culpable as he is and then she does it basically <laughs> out of you know she always tries to do the right thing even with Beneke yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Beneke's oh, yeah, got yeah. the Beneke's got the screwed that. up books yeah. and she's I, I, refusing I she, off the bat she she would have come across as the hero you know because yeah. <laughs> I think I think you know the the way in which Walt feels like he's lacking control in his life is because yeah. because Skyler is the one that's kind of pulling the screen, strings and is yeah. really the one controlling his life. Right. You know. So so in a way, I, I, it makes sense why the fans really detest her because you know she's the one that was kind of uh, being that control freak from the beginning. But it wasn't until yeah. towards later in the series where Walt you knew was never going to come back. He was never going to be. You know the high school teacher Walt, the the, the innocent Walt. He was going to be yeah. a convict um, Walt. You know, it wasn't until he was, you know, I am danger. That guy. I where, am the one who knocks. Oh, yeah. What a yeah. great scene. Yeah. Yeah. And the, where, the thing that I love too. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Chris. The thing I love about Walt's character too is when Heisenberg comes out, he has that like head tilt thing. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't know if you guys ever saw it. Like he's his mouth's like half open, his eyes yeah. are narrow, and he does this like <laughs> like this like like it's not that dramatic, Especially but when it's like he has a the weird hat head tilt thing yeah. that just cut, and it's like that's when it's just seeping out of him, and he doesn't even know what he's saying at that point. Yeah. So it, here's a question. Oh, and I'm, I'm sure that's intentional. I, oh yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I, I was watching some interviews, and even the way that Brian Cranston described. How he portrayed Walt in the beginning, he wanted him to have like almost like a a drag gait, like uh, sunken in shoulders, you know, yeah. someone who is very timid. Yeah. So I'm sure he had to do the exact opposite uh, when when going into the Heisenberg character. Sure. Right. Now, would you guys say that Heisenberg is the true identity of Walter White, or is Walter White the true identity of, of Heisenberg? Who is the real Walter White? I think it shades more. I think it shades more towards Heisenberg because yeah. I think Heisenberg is angry. He's bitter. He wants control, but when he gets it, he really doesn't know what to do with it. Right. And he is, he's exactly what Mike described him as. He's a time bomb. Hmm. And when he goes right. off, you don't want to be he around just, for the ticking. explosion. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to yeah. be pretty. Yeah. Right. And, and then he and then he's left with his with the fruits of his labor. Mm. 
Yeah. And it's not remotely what he envisioned, and he's he's literally he's sitting on a pile of money. And yeah, that's, that's not enough. I mean, that's the whole yeah. reason he's doing this, though, it's, is to support his family yeah. after he's gone. Well, that's the thing; it yeah. evolves over time. It right. literally becomes like he says, "I liked it. I was good at it." Right. Yeah. Well, look at all the sacrifices, all the people that have been killed well, this, because this, of him. The scene where he stands up and looks at them and goes, "What are you doing? We're supposed to be a family." Mm -hmm. That's the detachment. Yeah, like it, it stopped being about his family <laughs> a long time like ago. Like in season three, <laughs> yeah. like probably the end right. of season two, it stopped being. He about likes his the family. power. He's obsessed. Absolutely. Yeah. He's he's power thirsty, power hungry, and it's yeah. You're right. It's not about because his family. he didn't. And I think I think it, and and I think the the catalyst there is just uh, gray matters and realizing what he gave yep. up. That's where I was uh, going to go. Ex exactly. You know, especially when. It, it became the billion dollar company that it became so he has that overshadowing him so it's almost like he's trying to catch up right. uh, to beat Elliot and Gretchen at their own game you know now I have a very quick theory oh, I'm sorry, sorry Randy sorry. I have a very quick yeah. theory I, it, to me it's, it's like it was tiptoed around during the show I believe that the whole the real catalyst of everything he was with Gretchen Something happened where Gretchen either had an affair with Elliot or mm -hmm. Walt and Gretchen had a bad breakup and then she ran to Elliot for comfort and Walt couldn't handle it. Yeah. And then he settled in his head for Skylar. Hmm. Yeah. And then they had Walter Jr. Walter Jr. unfortunately, you know, has the cerebral palsy and then they have another kid at, you know, basically Walt's yeah. 50 and she's 40 or whatever. And... That's really the catalyst to. It's like you're saying, Chris, with gray matter. That's the catalyst of everything. Right. Had if he right. was with Gretchen, at least in my theory, and he stayed with her, we don't have this show. And mm -hmm. because of those events, I think this led to he saw an opportunity to finally get his version of gray matter, whatever that is, to him. Mm -hmm. And boom, we have See, yeah. Breaking Bad. Right. And. And that's what I hope uh, a part of me is dreaming that they do on Netflix. You know, just the idea that or just the tagline that they give this movie, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, right. makes you wonder, like, oh, there could be other Breaking Bad movies. That's so what I thought. It would, <laughs> it would be awesome if they explored kind of these um, prequel timelines, you know. And, I'd love to see a, a movie about Gustavo Fring. I think that'd be a fan. Yes. Gus Spring would be a lot of... See, the problem with it, too, is is these actors that they'd be basing it on, yeah. they're already very old. Giancarlo Esposito? He's got 60-ish. Yeah, but if you're going to yeah. do a prequel about Gus, I oh, mean, yeah. in those flashbacks, he looks like he's... I think you. I, I think we could agree. Gus is like 45 or so in the show. Yeah. Yeah, but Maybe. you know what? I think he's probably in his like early 30s when he meets with uh, Don Eladio the first time. So you don't so think they could just hey, re Nick, they could cast Nick, a younger actor? Don't for Nick, don't forget, we live in an age now of de-aging. And if Netflix is uh, true. investing true. in The Irishman, where I believe three quarters of that movie is uh, de-aged De Niro and, and uh, Pesci, I think... Yeah. De Niro, pretty much. Uh, we, they could definitely invest the money right. for another Breaking Bad movie where they can de-age those characters. You mean through uh, CGI, like uh, yeah. Gemini Man? Yeah, I could see that, yeah. I think it would be a lot of fun to watch like a prequel for Walt and how he gets to meeting Skyler and you know what yeah, happens with Grey Matter. That, that would be a lot of fun. That might be a Fring little boring, would be fun. though. I, I think kind of dull. You could, the Walt thing I think you could do is like a limited series. Like I don't mm. think I don't think there's enough meat there to do like a four or yeah. five season story arc. Yeah, but no, I think I you think could do like a six or seven season. episode. Or, we, or maybe like a, like a crime procedural drama with uh, Dean Norris and the DEA agents. There, there's a lot Something in there. Interesting. Though, because, yeah. um, there's a lot in there. After watching the series again, there are these little setups of characters' uh, past. You could definitely do a lot with Grey Matters, you know, and you could also, you know, and to the point where you know him and Skylar meet at that at that uh, restaurant, you know, where she used to be a maitre d. Um, you could talk after watching Gustavo and his partner. Um, you know, go to the uh, the crime boss. I didn't realize that there were hints that he might be gay. You know, so like that that could be a an interesting. Yeah, that was that was an interesting kind of undertone that they played there, where yeah. it was like, well, yeah, so, you weren't a hundred percent sure of what their relationship yeah. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was it and a brother? Also, was it a cousin? Was it a lover? Yeah. Right, right. And then there's the Mike character where 
you learn that you know he was a corrupt cop in in Philly. So and I'm not sure if they explore that in Better Call Saul, but it's there. You know they they mention it. Plain they and simple, they talk about know. it a little in Better Call Saul. Um, okay. They like expand on his family life and stuff, but they don't really go into a ton of detail with it. Guys, yeah. uh, I just want to. We have a few minutes left. Um, I just wanted to say. Uh, do you guys do you guys recommend people rewatch Breaking Bad before the movie, or I go mean, for it? Yeah, I think All yeah, series? I think it, absolutely because it's just great television. Of course, but if you have to kind of do a Cliff Notes version, I would say watch the last season. Mm. Um, you know, or a YouTube compilation. If you, if you have to pick one episode, pick you know, do or two, do yeah. the last two episodes. Well, uh, Netflix so also played like a two and a half or yeah. three minute like recap oh, that's good they yeah. did it when i i don't know if it was just because i was putting it on the day it came out or what it was but they did like a two or three minute recap i think before the movie played huh and i didn't see that on netflix yeah i don't know if it was because of when i put it on or what but they did like a two or three minute recap of everything that happened in breaking bad that's perfect so yeah. you kind of have an idea of what the important stuff is I'm sure yeah. you could find a good one on YouTube, a good oh, yeah. like five minute one or something. Or just watch yeah. the whole series. I mean, it's only sixty some yeah. odd episodes. It's not prohibitively <laughs> long to watch. Yeah. True. I mean, if you could the find first the first season is seven yeah. episodes. I got. I got to so, say this though. I was I was fortunate to uh, watch El Camino on the big screen. I went to Alamo Draft House. Oh wow! Awesome. And it was the the first scene uh, when he's talking to Mike. Yeah. Um, it was incredible. It was so there were, there are some beautiful, beautiful shots here, uh, landscape man. shots um, that I don't think I would have gotten the same feeling. At were there home. were there a but, lot of people um, in the theater yeah. with you? Was it like uh, like a Marvel movie experience where people hmm. were like yelling with cameos and stuff? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, <laughs> it was funny. It was a late screening. It was like 10 p.m. and uh-huh. There were Breaking Bad fans there. Like, who That's else awesome. would? Who else would go to the cinema? <laughs> right. You know, when you could the same day watch it at home on Netflix and, P- oh my God, not well. That's... I, 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 no spoilers, but yeah. when certain people came on the screen, people were flipping out. Ooh, so. That's great. That's all. Awesome. I, I was watching movie. it at home and I was freaking out. When certain people <laughs> yeah. showed up, so I can only imagine yeah. what a theater would have been like with yeah. like fifty oh, or sixty was, people. The Alamo Draft House is it's a fine establishment. I saw Groundhog yeah. Day a couple years ago there. And, yep. um, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm gonna go back there to see the lighthouse, which uh, that's also on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, is that on Netflix? Yeah, I believe so. Meryl Streep, oh, right? Yeah. No, that's the Laundromat. Oh no, no. no, no. The, uh, <laughs> which yeah. uh, okay. Laundromat is Netflix, Rosemary's baby? With, uh, lighthouse. Um, Rob Patterson and uh, William Defoe. That's okay. From, uh, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I mixed oh, so, them up. So not Rosemary's Baby. Not Rosemary's Baby. All right. Well, Guys, we yeah, have a few minutes gonna... left. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention um, that a Mr. Robert Forster was in this, was in El Camino. Passed away like the day after it came yeah, out. Yeah, so, guy. you know, rest yeah. in peace, sir. Uh, you were a Dude. fantastic actor and one of the best scenes in this movie, I'd say. So, Phenomenal actor in, yeah. in both Breaking Bad and in El Camino. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie yeah, Brown, great. you know. Yeah. He he allowed Jesse to get his piece, so, and now Robert Forrester has his own piece, so yeah. So. Indeed, it's poetic. Yeah, it's yes, Good he's riding off there. into the Alaska sunset. Yes, yes. Well, guys, um, we have. I want to just run our commercial for our sponsor, Magnitude Jewelry, right here. We'll be right back. Under the radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call 718-268-6634.
And we're back. Hey guys, Under the Radar. I'm your host, Randy Unger. And with a few minutes left, I just wanted to mention October 22nd is the special uh, Steelbook Blu-ray edition of Galaxy Quest, uh, 20th anniversary of this Whoa. wonderful film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it is it is del delightful. It's funny. It's adventurous. It's, a, it's really a good time. So Galaxy Quest, check that out. In stores uh, October twenty second. How do you have that? I, I got it through uh, publicist, and I just have to mention it, and I did. Wow, they <laughs> they, they gave well you done. the the steel book? Yeah. And oh my god! It is it's got the hookups. It's got you know a bunch of great special features. Um, never give up, never surrender. Actually, uh, coming up, I believe in November is the never give, never surrender. Uh, it's a documentary about the making and the legacy of Galaxy Quest. Oh, wow. I saw a special sneak peek at New York Comic Con. Awesome. One of the best doc documentaries I've ever seen. Um, all right, guys. So, a few minutes left. Uh, any plugs? Anything going on, Mr. Commando? Uh, Twitter and Instagram, at Nick Commando. Wrestling podcast about wrestling. Be on the lookout for that. At some point, I'll record new stuff. And that's it. Nice. All right. Short and... Short and sweet. For once. Yeah, very good. Chris, anything going on that you can talk about? Yeah, yeah. Um, for Nationals, uh, we just uh, got into a select um, uh, festival, the Change Festival. Uh, so that's great. And we're on Amazon Prime right now. So anyone could download the episode. Uh, just look for Foreign Nationals Mexico and... Uh, hmm. You know, get uh, get on, get seated, get comfortable uh, because it's a wild ride. <laughs> and remind viewers, Far Nationals, it's it's a mini series. It's uh, it's uh, right now it's a single episode, um, but we're hoping to uh, make it into a mini series. Um, we're we're getting green lights for the second episode soon, but um, yeah, right now it's just a, a short film uh, first episode. Um, and, it, and it's great. I gotta say, um, it's 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 meaningful. I think there's a lot that's apropos with uh, the current uh, president's administration uh, and the issues of immigration and DACA and separating families. So it's, it has a lot of heart and and uh, suspense in there too. That's great. So it's it's not just entertaining. It's also informative and it's yes. sparking uh, discussion. Okay, yes, I, yes. I plug if we plug get away. enough people, we can create uh, some really good discussion. So okay. uh, make sure you see it. Yeah. All right, sweet. Also, to follow up on Chris's very important plugs on a, a show that's about, you know, immigration and stuff, watch the World Series. My Washington <laughs> Nationals are in the World Series. I am pumped. <laughs> watch that on Fox. Okay. Randy, I apologize right. for fine. wasting Thank 20 you for... seconds with that. Well, it I is a sports desk. I had to do it. Yeah. Desk, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You going to do the weather now? You or to. You could? Yeah. It's raining. Okay, good. All right. Uh, 12 seconds left. Some uh, sponsor magnet, our magnet, mag that, our sponsor magnitude jewelry, some plugs, some events coming up in November, the Naval Expo in Tarrytown, New York, and also the Heart Freedom Expo in Chicago, Illinois. We'll have more information and dates uh, regarding that soon. But guys, uh, I want to thank you for being here, Mr. Nick Commando. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Oh, thank you. And you Chris Clement. <laughs> and Chris Clemente, always a pleasure. Even if you're not in here in person, you are here digitally. So thank you. Yes, for I am right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll be back next week with more Unger the Radar. I'm your host, Randy Unger. Stay tuned. <laughs>